Okay, we are beginning chapter 9, our discussion on stoichiometry. So, uh, I know it's an intimidating sounding term, but as we do some stoichiometry problems, it will actually be, um, well, relatively simple. Um, a lot of this involves being able to write and balance equations and a little bit of dimensional analysis. So first of all, stoichiometry involves the mathematics of a balanced chemical equation. It's a very important topic and we use it over and over and again throughout the year. So please learn the method and follow the steps. Remember, units are very important when we do dimensional analysis. So let's start with something relatively simple, the synthesis of water from its elements. So we have hydrogen and oxygen gas reacting to form water. So to balance this, let's put a 2 in front of H2O. That gives me two oxygens on both sides. I have four hydrogens, so I need to put a 2 in front of H2 on the reactant side. Now what we have are coefficients. The coefficient 2 is here. It's not written, and if nothing's written there, it's understood that the coefficient's 1. And we have the coefficient 2 on the product side of the equation. The coefficients in the balanced equation represent the mole ratio. Now there's that word mole. We use that a lot this year, and it's going to pop up again in chapter 9. So let's take a look at this. If I had two moles of hydrogen, two moles of hydrogen, and unlimited oxygen, how much water could, I, could be produced? Well, let's do our dimensional analysis. We'll start with what we know. Two moles of hydrogen. We'll multiply by a conversion factor, which is just a fraction. We'll put the unit we want to get out of on the bottom. Moles of hydrogen. And I want to know how much water I could make. Let's do that in moles also. So we're going to go to moles of water. Now, if the coefficients in the balanced re equation represent the mole ratio, the mole ratio in this equation is two hydrogens form two waters. So two moles of hydrogen form two moles of water. So we do the math. Moles of hydrogen divide out. We have two times two divided by two, which is two moles of water could be made during this reaction. Once again, it's going to be a bit redundant here. This means that the ratio is 2 moles of H2 to 2 moles of water, or we could also say in this case 1 to 1. Well, let's do another problem. What if I had 2 moles of oxygen, and this time unlimited hydrogen? How much water could be produced? So let's see. 2 moles of oxygen times conversion factor. We will put moles of oxygen on the bottom. We're going to get rid of that this time. And we want to get into moles of water. Now that ratio is not 2 to 2. If you look at the equation above, we have two, or excuse me, one mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. So one mole of oxygen makes two moles of water. Moles of oxygen divide out. 2 times 2 divided by 1 is 4 moles of water. This means that the ratio is 1 mole of oxygen to 2 moles of water. So in our mole ratio, we will be using the coefficients from the balanced equation. The important and I hope obvious point of this example is that the coefficients in the balanced equation tell us the mole relationships. This is the most important concept in stoichiometry. All right, well, let's take a look at another example. This time, let's use a number that's not as pretty as one or two. Let's use 4.83 moles of bromine. It's reacting with excess sodium. So we have unlimited amounts of sodium. How many moles of sodium bromide will be formed according to the equation above? Now, step one in all stoichiometry problems should be to balance the equation because we need to get that mole ratio that we find from the coefficients in the balanced equation. So I have two bromines here. I'm going to put a 2 in front of NaBr to give me two bromines. That gives me two sodiums. So I'll put a 2 in front of sodium. 
So my balanced equation is 2 to 1 to 2. Now we're going to convert moles of the given substance into moles of our unknown substance. So we are given 4.83 moles of bromine. So 4.83 moles, abbreviation for moles of course is MOLS, of bromine, Br2. We want to get out of moles of bromine, putting the unit we want to get out of on the bottom so they divide out, and we want to get into moles of what we're after. And in this case, the question is how many moles of NaBr will be formed. Now, this ratio comes once again from the balanced equation. So we have one mole of Br2 produces two moles of NaBr. Moles of Br2 divide out, so we end up with 4.83 times 2, which is 9.66 moles of NaBr. Now you guys can check my math if you want. I believe that is correct. All right, so far so good. Pretty straightforward. Once again, we're going to beat this to death today. The mole ratio comes from the coefficients in the balanced equation. All right, next up, let's make it a bit more challenging. This time, instead of starting with moles of known substance, let's start with grams. So I have 96 grams of oxygen, reacts with excess carbon monoxide to produce how many moles of carbon dioxide? Now, of course, to do stoichiometry, remember, we have to start with a balanced equation. So, the equation is going to be oxygen reacts with carbon monoxide to produce carbon dioxide. Oxygen reacts with carbon monoxide and we're producing carbon dioxide. So, to balance this, let's put a 2 in front of CO and a 2 in front of CO2. Gives me two carbons on both sides and four oxygens on both sides. Do you remember the first thing we need to do? Well, we've done it. We balanced the equation. The second thing, we have to get into moles of known substance. So we're going to have to go from grams to moles of oxygen. So, 96.0 grams of oxygen. Put the unit we want to get out of on the bottom again, grams of oxygen. And the unit we want to get into, moles of oxygen. One mole of oxygen gas, if we look at our periodic table, oxygen has an atomic mass of 15.999, let's call that 16.00. So two of them would be 32.00 grams per mole. Now let's see, we would have 96.0 divided by 32.00, that gives us 3.00 moles of O2. I'm following some simple significant fig figure rules, three significant figures in this measurement, four in this, I have to go with the lower number of sig figs. Then step three, convert moles of the given substance into moles of the unknown substance. So we have three moles of oxygen. We'll put moles of oxygen on the bottom and moles of the unknown substance. So we're after how many moles of CO2? So moles of CO2. This mole ratio, remember, comes from the balanced equation. So for O2, there's a 1 and for CO2, there is a 2. So 3.00 times 2 divided by 1 is 6.00 moles of CO2. Okay, Now, we can do that in one expression. Instead of doing it in separate steps, we can do it in one step. So, this is how you do it. We'll start with what we know, 96 grams of O2. We will go from grams of O2 to moles of O2. One mole of oxygen 32.00 grams, and then we'll add another step here, another conversion factor to take us from moles of oxygen to moles of CO2. Remember that ratio comes from the balanced equation. 
one oxygen and two CO2s. So the unit is moles of CO2. We have 96 divided by 32, which is 3, times 2, which gives us 6.00. The same answer. Okay, that's the first part of our lecture on stoichiometry.